All right, good afternoon. Have a very special treat for you guys today. So this is what I'm hopeful that my yard might look like someday, decades and decades and decades from now. But this is, we're in Homestead, Florida. This is as tropical of an area that you can get in the United States. So southern tip of Florida, what you see here right above me is a massive mamesa pote tree and i don't know if you could see it from back there right behind the clump of the banana but that is a good 30 foot tall black sapote tree it is loaded with fruits a uh, milk fruit tree this being that these are very slow growers uh, i would guess this to be at least 25 years old Sepadella. I mean, as you can see, it's it's container grown, and yet, I mean, these are you know massive in size. Right behind us, uh, a June plum there. Yeah, I mean, you absolutely can grow fruit trees in containers, and also at the same time have them uh, productive. Check it out. This is a very mature looking canister. No fruits yet. So essentially what you see here, this is all established trees. Um, and again, this is as close to the native climate as you can get really. Uh, so this guy right here that is approaching also 30 foot tall is what I have in my yard which I keep telling you I mean look at the root system don't plant this next to your foundation it, it will really screw up your house um, this is a uh, a duhat or a jamun also known as a java plum kind of big <laughs> but not in the central valley just again our climate keeps knocking them down so it can, uh, contains them. Jackfruit, of course. So I should mention that the nice thing about this particular location is this is the Spice and Fruit Park. Um, you know, you're able to pick the fruits that, that fell uh, to the ground. There's just so much to see here. Oh, I see another jackfruit tree here. Oh, before we do that, I think this might be a miracle berry. Oh no, it's a jabuticaba. Huh. Yeah, check it out. Jabuticabas in our climate, they do really well. Uh, handles our sun and winter without any difficulties. Love the water. Give them as much water as you can get. Uh, if you look at the fruits, I mean, that, that's what's unique about the Japoticaba is the, the fruits grow on the trunk of the tree. Yep. And this is the, uh, the jackfruit that caught my uh, attention here. I saw some, oh, right there actually. No, actually no, there's not a jackfruit. Looks like a jackfruit, but it's not. It's uh, some sort of a sapote. Let me see if there's a label. No, nope, yeah, of course it's a sapote. It's a mame sapote. Leaves look different. But that is a, a mame sapote. Looks to be a sepadella of some sort. Not sure what variety. And here it is. The Inga. Ice cream bean tree. Another tree that can do pretty good in the Central Valley. Give them, giving them some couple of years worth of frost protection when they're young. But yeah, uh, this does pretty good in the Central Valley once it's hardened just a bit. So yeah, very 
very filmsy, the branches are very flexible. And did I mention there's 37 acres worth of various tropical fruit trees here in this area? This is more of a kind of a, a showpiece of what can grow here in, in the right climate. Green sapote. Wow. I mean, these get pretty big in their natural environment. Mame, of course. Another uh, Cepadella tree. <sighs> I mean, these are massive. More canisters. Look at this, check it out. Kaimito tree. I don't know if you can see the top, but this guy is loaded. You know, let me see if there's any that fell, which are still in good condition. But yeah, there's a... Um, Kaimito. Yeah, again, the ones that uh, fell, I mean, you're more than welcome to pick them up. And best of all, seeds, save the seeds. They don't mind if you take the seeds. So I'll have to come back for these. This appears to be the purple variety. Nice thing about Kaimito that I like is that the leaves are very attractive looking. Green on the top, but golden yellow on the bottom. It's, it's one of the nicest looking trees. Right behind us, another uh, canistel. This is the canistel, caimito, sapote section. Yeah, it's just so much to see. I mean, I, I don't know where I'm going. I'm getting lost. This looks to be another mame sapote. So let's see. Luckily, there is a map here. It, it essentially shows you the, the trees from the various regions of the world. So this area, this looks to be more or less South America, Latin America. Bruce Kennestel. And here it is, the king of all fruits, the jackfruit, a black gold variety. You know, in Southeast Asia, in the commercial um, establishments, what they do is they actually put nets underneath the trees. So that way as it falls, it doesn't kill you if you're walking underneath it. I mean, these fruits, I mean, they've been known to weigh up to at least 80 pounds or so. Another tree that technically can make it in our environment, but uh, yeah, you're going to want to heavily protect it during the uh, first couple of years. Let's uh, walk around here. Wow, this is the, the jackfruit forest. Check it 
check it out. You know, I, I, I'll give you a tip on, on jackfruits, ripening versus unripe ones. Unripe ones, when you look at the fruits, they're very pointy. Uh, they're, they're very concentrated and it's very pointy. Whereas the ripe ones, um, they are less pointy and, and they're more flat. And the, the spaces between each of these sections are greater. So that, that's how you could tell. And also when you hit it, you, you could also tell. But visually looking at it, you could tell when it's ripe. More jackfruits. Probably should get away from there. Another fruit that um, <laughs> I've had nearly 100% germination rate with uh, uh, the seeds. Uh, jackfruits just grown from seeds. Just most jackfruits will produce fruits in uh, about three years or so. Okay, let me see what kind of tree this is. Ah, chestnut. More jackfruits over here. Wow. Yeah, this is like the jackfruit section. I mean, there's nothing but jackfruits around here. 